You are listening to Episode 8, Search Engine Optimization and Social Media Marketing 101 for Nurses with guest Cynthia Sanchez of OhSoPinteresting.com. Welcome to the Nurse Practitioner Show, brought to you by Accessible Healthcare Institute, empowering you with dynamic education and integrative healthcare. The Nurse Practitioner Show will share evidence-based practice strategies to implement translational research in the clinical setting with the goal of improving healthcare delivery and patient outcomes. Accessible Healthcare Institute strives to be an advocate for health promotion, disease prevention, improving public health, interprofessional collaboration, health policy efforts, and advanced nursing practice. Practice. Make sure to head on over to www.yourahi.org to subscribe to our newsletter and connect on social media. Let's join this episode of the Nurse Practitioner Show with your host, Dr. Rachel Silva, Nurse Practitioner. For this episode, we speak with Cynthia Sanchez. Cynthia is a registered nurse who has branched out into the national and international spotlight as a social media marketing expert, which began with her love for Pinterest. Cynthia shares an important strategy for nurses interested in learning more about how to increase your online presence and promote the nursing profession through avenues such as business, blogs, books, and more. This episode only touches the tip of the iceberg. So be sure to check out her website on ways that you can learn more. Show notes with links discussed for each episode are available at thenpshow.com, YouTube, as well as on the show's free apps for Apple, Android, and Kindle devices. Let's get started. Uh, Welcome to the Nurse Practitioner Show. We are joined with Cynthia Sanchez. She is a registered nurse a business entrepreneur, social media strategist, and expert, Pinterest blogger and podcaster at OhSoPinteresting.com, and a national and international convention speaker. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Oh, my pleasure. I've really been looking forward to speaking with you about this. I have too. I I said I feel like I'm speaking to a celebrity now. (laughs) talking to Cynthia. <laughs> no, and, it's just me. <laughs> and Cynthia is in my, my home state of the state of smiling places and beautiful, I almost forgot the slogan, the state of smiling faces and beautiful places, South, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, well, as, as a newcomer to South Carolina, I've definitely found that to be true. Definitely. And I found out about Cynthia when I was at the American Association of Nurse Practitioner Conference last year when I was speaking with uh, a fellow podcaster, Barbara Phillips. And I had seen Cynthia's uh, podcast, but I had no idea that you were a, a registered nurse. So I was wondering if you could share a little bit about your nursing background. Sure. Um, Growing up, I didn't know what I wanted to be and, you know, got sent off to college and decided I was going to go into marketing because that was the time of, you know, just coming out of the 80s and big money and we all just wanted to be in business, right? But then I quickly found out I didn't want to be behind a desk. Thought about teaching for a while. Uh, Nope, didn't want to do that either after I got pretty much most of the way through with my education and then stopped uh, my education because I had a set of twins uh, my last year of college. So kind of raised the family a little bit, had another set of twins and then had some experience in the hospital with both sets of twins. You know, they, they had a, thankfully they were mostly healthy, but you know, we had, had a few visits there and decided nursing's what I needed to do. It kind of incorporated everything that I wanted to do and be. I got the kind of the, the people side of things, the research side of things, the talking to people side of things and the teaching side of things especially. And I really, really enjoyed the teaching side of things. Um, So I started off in labor and delivery and was there for for a few years and then went over to women's surgery, enjoyed that. And then the kids got a little bit older and it's like, well, I need to do something with a little bit more of a a different kind of schedule. So I ended up uh, switching over to radiation oncology and did that for a few years. And that's kind of where my nursing career kind of took a pause and things changed. (laughs) 
I had no idea. I did labor and delivery for 15 years in, wow. in Orangeburg there in South Carolina. So how did you move into becoming a social media expert, especially with Pinterest from nursing? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's a it was something I never planned, something I never intended. Uh, but it was a podcast that I was listening to that told me about the possibility of building a business around a blog. And I was like. No way. No way that's possible. You know, how does that happen? Um, you know, for me, I always thought building a business took a lot of money and a lot of, you know, specific business knowledge. And, you know, you had to have a storefront and all these, you know, big legal and business things that you just had to know. Um, and so I listened to this podcast. It's like, well, I can give that a try. I always thought that I would eventually do something around uh, the oncology field. Um, I had developed a nurse navigation program in the cancer center that I was working at and really, really enjoyed that aspect. Once again, brought everything together, the teaching, the, the people, the, you know, kind of research kind of things. And um, so I was like, well, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to, you know, create a blog or a website or anything. I don't know how to do any of this. Let's start off something that's fun and figure out the technical side of things. And in the meantime, I can come up with that great business idea, you know, for, you know, once it's all, all figured out. And at that point, Pinterest had taken over my life. Uh, my husband and I are self-proclaimed nerds. Um, we have been interested in, in the IT world since, you know, its inception pretty much and the internet since it was, as they say, black and white way back when. Um, and nothing I'd ever experienced online had sucked me in or impacted my life as much as Pinterest had. Um, I was changing the things that I was cooking for my family, what I was buying, what we were doing. The honey-do list my husband had grew exponentially um, just because of this one website. So I decided to start the first blog about the things that I was doing with Pinterest, the experiences that I was having, the new websites I was finding, the projects or recipes I was creating, um, just to really learn the whole blogging side of things. And I did that for a couple of months and um, went to a blogging conference that was all about, um, you know, about blogging and new media in hopes of learning how to take this blog and really make it into a business or, or a blog, not particularly the Pinterest one. Um, so I printed up a few business cards, hoping to get maybe a couple more readers beyond, you know, my husband and my mother who would read it occasionally, <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, met some great people, met some, you know, some and got some great ideas there and learned a lot there. But with those business cards, one of the projects that I wrote about was getting my hair cut using Pinterest. Pinterest, you know, has a mobile app. I took it into my salon and I took pictures of it and, you know, all that kind of stuff and wrote about it. And uh, the salon owner happened to be a family friend. So I asked if I could leave some business cards there, maybe just, you know, once again, just to get a couple more readers. Well, a local business owner found my card, gave me a call and said, hey, we're starting a new business. We see you know Pinterest. We want our products to be on business. Can we hire you? And my jaw just dropped to the floor. It's like, <laughs> what? No, Pinterest is fun. This is it for business. But then I really thought about all the ways that it had impacted me and it caused me to do the, the way it had changed my behavior. It's like, yeah, it is. I visited new websites. I bought new things. I did new things. I tweeted or you know, around at that point, you know, shared things on Facebook that I never would have thought of before, never would have found before because of Pinterest. So I could really see the potential for a business owner to use this as a marketing tool. So we had a, quite a few conversations of explaining that I'm a nurse. I'm not a marketer. I'm not a business person. This is how I help people. This is what I do. But I found that I could quickly take all of my nursing skills, except for maybe, you know, starting IVs and things like that and put them into the marketing world really easily. Um, so, you know, we, they were my first client and I thought about it. Well, you know, if, if they'll hire me, then there's probably potential that other people will hire me. And I just kind of switched my focus and got very obsessive about learning everything I could about social media marketing and the different platforms and, and things like that. Took a few courses and then switched the blog's focus from, you know, Pinterest for fun to Pinterest for business. And that's kind of how it all began. Well, you know, this is getting off topic just a little bit, but I just saw where you have a course on Linda.com. I do. It? Yeah, that just launched uh, less. Well, just about a week ago. Yeah. How, so how does that work? Because I, I saw it on Twitter. So I, I, mm -hmm. did, um, I didn't even know about Linda until I saw your Twitter, your tweet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Lynda.com is a resource uh, for educational videos and tutorials about how to do different things. And they have they cover a wide range of topics, mostly business 
focused and design, website design, graphic design, Adobe, all the Adobe products they have tutorials for. Um, they have quite a bit of social media you know, types of tutorials. Um, but the great thing about Linda is that they're very, it's, that's what they're set out to do. They became the online educational company pretty much. And everything is very highly, you know, produced and well done. And they have a great, awesome team there, you know, huge studios and writers and, and all that kind of stuff to help the authors, which is what they call the people who create these courses. Um, so they approached me to create a Pinterest for business course. And of course I jumped at the opportunity, um, to do that for them, but for people who use Linda, it's a membership type of, um, format. So once you're a member of Linda, you have access to all of those videos, all of those courses. You don't have to pay additionally for that. So there's a ton that you can learn, uh, from Linda. So when they, they approached me, I, I was, you know, super excited to do that. Yeah. Um, well, as ner- a lot of nurses and nurse practitioners are looking in ways to expand um, opportunities for themselves, um, uh, thinking about uh, business strategies. And when you are uh, thinking of business strategies, um, you also think about um, having a, a website and then you learn that you need to know about SEO. And that's not really something that we that's not the lingo that we're used to as nurses. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering if and it's very important. So I was wondering if you could explain exactly what SEO is and why it would be important uh, for someone that's pursuing an interest in business. Sure. Um, the easiest way that I can explain SEO and SEO stands for search engine optimization um, is that you really if you want to just I like to use kind of analogies. Um, and if you think of the Internet as the ultimate online library, because you put in a search just like you would in for a library search when you were searching, you know, or think of those words, or the author's names. If we want to go way back to the card catalog, um, you had to know what to search for or what you were looking for. You had to have an idea of the topic or who wrote it or or something like that. Um, And that is exactly what you want to have ready on your website. You want to have those words that people will be looking for to find you online. Um, And they have to be really user friendly. I know for us in the medical field, we tend to get a little bit technical. And we, you know, if we use those technical phrases, maybe other people in our industry will understand to use those phrases. You know, if we were writing a a, a journal of sorts, you know, then we could definitely, you know, um, use those technical phrases because that's who we'd want to attract. But if we're looking to attract people outside of that space, outside of that industry and really look to attract to, you know, new customers, new patients, new clients, we need to use the the words and the phrases that they would use. So throughout several places on your website, you need to make sure that those words and phrases are used properly. Um, you can't overuse them because then search engines like Google will say, uh, you know, your keyword stuffing. So those keywords or those phrases that people are searching for, there has to be a good balance. It has to be done naturally. Um, for example, if, if we were searching for, you know, if I had, you know, gone ahead and created that, that oncology type of, um, of a business and had a, a, biz, a website for it, I would want to use, you know, support group and help in different types of cancer names. You know, if maybe if I, I spoke about or, you know, focused on one kind, you know, maybe if it was, you know, just a skin cancer help kind of page or an article, even if it goes down to the article or blog post level, I want to make sure I use those phrases over and over. Because when search engines go to your website or, you know, places like Google, um, and people go to Google, Google has to know what to bring their users. They want to bring their customers the best websites possible related to whatever it is that they're searching for. And the only way that Google and other search engines can tell what is on your website or what your website is about is the text you use. And those texts, you know, all the text that you use on there has to have those words repeated. It has to be updated regularly. Um, so it's it's that frequency, those keywords that really make the basis and the foundation for search engine optimization. Um, uh, isn't there also some strategy, you know, Nursing bloggers and authors, this is also something that would be important for them to understand and also with images because I didn't know that the file name for images would be so important. 
Yes. File names, any place that you have text available to you, whether it's file names, the actual content, uh, video names, any, you know, your podcast titles or, you know, the file names for the podcast, any type of text that you put onto your site or as a part of your website or blog, um, you have to keep that keyword and that SEO thought process as you're creating those files or uploading those files to your website or blog. Um, Because Google can't tell what the picture is of yet. They really don't incorporate their image recognition systems. I mean, I I know are, are, you know, quickly being developed and are, you know, becoming a part of our world, but that's not the majority, you know, I guess of information that they use or if they even use that. They have these algorithms, these bots, these little technological magical things, I call them, that go out there and scour, you know, millions of websites and blog posts every second probably to figure out what it's about and the way that they do that is through the text. And another thing, um, as nurses, we have a science uh, background. So we we use statistics to help measure um, as a tool to measure our growth and improvement. So when you are pursuing a business and trying to explore ways to bring about your presence greater on the in the online platforms, what are some strategies that uh, or tools that you can use to measure your your growth? Uh, my absolute favorite is Google Analytics. It's a free service. Um, you do have to install a little bit of code on the back end of your website so Google knows that you truly are the owner of that website. Um, but then it shows you so much information. I mean, there are courses through Google themselves. There's you know other third-party courses. I'm sure Linda has a course about using Google Analytics to really help you decipher all of that information. Um, you know, most importantly, it'll tell you where your traffic is coming from, where people are finding you. Is it coming through Google search? Are you being linked to through other blogs or websites? Or are you getting a lot of your traffic from, you know, social networks, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter? Um, you know, it'll it'll tell you a lot. It'll tell you what type of device, you know, your your website visitors, your blog visitors are coming from. Is it, are they coming to you from a computer, from a mobile phone? Um, you can even, they, they kind of have a, an actually live snapshot right now. So if I were to go to my Google Analytics account, I could see how many people are on there right now. Um, I can see their flow. I can see that they land on this page and go to this page and then they drop off. Well, I can, can go and research that second page and see what I could change to maybe keep them on there longer to, you know, get them over to the product page. So then I can make a sale or to the appointment page so they can book a session with me. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can tell from Google Analytics and it's right. free. So yeah, why not great. use it? You know, right. <laughs> There has been some um, research, I think it may have been from the Harvard Business Research, that indicated some platforms that are um, underutilized that can bring about our presence greater when we are exploring business opportunities, uh, particularly related to Pinterest. I was wondering if you could explain any of those research findings. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, when, when the, the, the folks over at Harvard research something, you know, you kind of want to listen up, you know, they're, they're, they're known to be a little bit smart up there. And they found a, a lot of interesting information um, that people that are using Pinterest tend to spend a little bit more. And that applies not only into the online space, but into offline space. So people will use it for research and then say, hey, I want this and take it into a store and buy it. You know, it's not necessarily that they're going to buy everything online. Um, a lot lot of business owners I know are kind of concerned that so much business is going into, you know, sit from home and and do your shopping there, but it's actually causing people to go in. It's that little bit of information that they can get online that kind of either sparks curiosity or desire to have whatever it is, or even builds a little bit of trust, you know? So for physical businesses, especially, I like that Pinterest can allow you to create blog content and get people to know you, whatever topic it, you know, Mm -hmm. you're writing about and get them to to know your your thought process or your opinions or you know the products that you have and ways to use it and they get to know you but then when they're in your area then they then oh yeah I'm familiar with this it's okay to go in they, you know kind of builds that familiarity a little bit so I can definitely see why you know the people up at Harvard found what they did um, and they they did find you know through their research and through other um, research online and they found a lot of great information shareaholic uh, which is a a content kind of network has hundreds of thousands of of users they found that pinterest drives a ton of traffic from blogs to websites and a continue and websites you know from pinterest 
to those places. Um, and it continues to grow year over year, um, you know, it, that it's driving more traffic than, you know, we, I, we talked about this a little bit before we, we started recording today, that it drives more traffic than, you know, Google Plus, Twitter, LinkedIn combined, you know, um, and, and that's a lot, you know, we're, we are creating all of this content, we are sharing it on social networks, um, we want to get some of that traffic back, because <laughs> that's yeah. where it all happens, you know, as, as great as those other places are online, we want them back on our blogs and our websites. And it's visual with all the different type images you can use and put on uh, Pinterest. So, um, yeah, yeah. And we know, I mean, just, you know, as nurses and, you know, the way our brains work, we can definitely interpret an image much quickly, much more quickly than we can text. We get an emotional response from it. It stimulates different parts of the brain um, than text does. And it, it, it happens and we get a much deeper connection, I think, with an image than we do with text. So Pinterest definitely is, is a great way to leverage that. When we think of Pinterest, I think most people think of women or and moms um, when we think of Pinterest. But Pinterest is also uh, for men and also for businesses. Mm-hmm. And so I was wondering if you could explain the difference between a personal account and a business account. Sure. Uh, between a personal and a business account, there isn't much difference in the functionality, um, the way that everything looks, you know, the pins, the repins, the boards, all that kind of stuff is the same across both accounts. But if you are a business owner and your ultimate goal is to drive business back to your website, to bring customers or potential customers back to your website, then you are using Pinterest for business purposes. So you should have a business account. Um, to get that, you go to business.pinterest.com. And if you already have an account, there's a little button in a few fields that you have to fill in to convert your existing account so you won't lose any followers. Um, But once you do have a business account, then you will have access to Pinterest analytics, which is gives you different information than Google Analytics um, and can give you some really good insights onto uh, what what's happening with your account. Um, so if you are using Pinterest, you should switch it just because it, it does. Um, it is one of their terms of use that you you have to abide. You know, they want to make sure that you're, you're kind of staying compliant. I haven't heard of an account getting shut down because of it, but, you know, you never know when that that could happen. You know, I have a personal account, but then I set up a business account. So you're saying actually I could have converted the personal account to a business account? You could have. Yeah, if that makes sense for you. Yeah. So if, if you're talking, uh, you know, for business related purposes, it's things about healthcare, nurse practitionership and having a business in the space and, and those types of things. And your personal account had recipes and travel locations and yeah. fashion ideas. <laughs> it might not have made the most sense to transfer, you know, to, to switch it over. It probably made more sense for you to use a brand new account. When we are thinking of SEO strategies and techniques, what are the things that we need to think about when we're using Pinterest? Since Pinterest is a lot more uh, important than most than we originally have always thought of. Um, and so when we we're trying to use Pinterest to bring about our awareness of things that we're doing for nursing or blogs or writing or speaking, what are some of the SEO strategies to use, particularly related to Pinterest? Well, Pinterest, I guess, kind of taking what you said, Pinterest is 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 not your traditional social network like you think of Facebook or Twitter. It is in and of itself a search tool. It is more like Google than it is like those other networks Um, because people go there to find things. People go there to discover things, not to have conversations with colleagues or friends or family members like some of the other social networks are there for. There is some of that, but that's not the way, you know, people really use that. So if you do decide to open up a Pinterest account or have one currently, it's really best to keep keywords, search, how are people going to find me? How can I be discovered with everything that you do? Once again, text matters. Um, text really, really matters, even on Pinterest, even though we, when we think about it, we think of big, beautiful pictures. Um, so every place that you have the opportunity to include text on your Pinterest account, whether it's your account name, your account description, your board titles, your board descriptions, everything that you have on there should have those keywords front and center um, to make it very discoverable, very searchable. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Cynthia. I was been so excited to be able to talk with you. I was wondering if you could share information on how people could find you when they want to listen to your podcast or participate in one of your workshops or ask you to speak at one of their nursing conferences. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, the best place is at oh so pinteresting dot com. Um, the podcast comes out about once a week, most every week, uh, unless life gets in the way or travel gets in the way. And uh, yeah, there's a contact form there. And of course, you can find my links to Pinterest and other social networks there as well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Nurse Practitioner Show. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast to receive future episodes. Then head on over to our website at www.yourahi.org and connect with us on social media. See you there.